All right, another episode of the Industry 45 podcast show. Uh, I'm your host, Shane Christopher Neal, GiantTV.ca. Uh, you can also check it out at GiantFM.com and now at MusicLifeMagazine.net. So, hope you're keeping well amidst all of this uh, social distancing. And today's interview, once again, is done via social distance. Uh, my guest is Mr. Mitch Perry, Longtime great guitar player in rock and roll. Uh, he's in Los Angeles, and he's got a brand new single out. It's called Believe, and what great timing to put this song out. And uh, the video is fantastic. Uh, it relates to COVID-19 uh, in the video, and, and just really cool. He's got a new album coming out called Music Box. So we're going to talk about the album and the single. And you know what? He's played with some great people. Michael Shanker, uh, Lita Ford, Cher. Heaven. In fact, they did a video, I remember, on MTV for Knocking on Heaven's Door, which was done, obviously, by Bob Dylan originally, uh, then by Heaven, and then it was done by Guns N' Roses. Didn't know if you knew that. And also, uh, he played on Aerosmith's Classics Live. He actually played keyboard uh, on the album. He's played on over 60 albums. And here is the kicker. He's also played in Faster Pussycat, which kind of, I don't know, that's just odd to me, but that's really freaking cool. Uh, he's got the Mitch Perry group. He's got three singers uh, in the band. He's got uh, a drummer, a bass player, and a keyboard player. Three of them actually play with Montrose at one time. One of the singers, Shelly, played with Michael Bolton. Uh, Tal played drums for Billy Idol. So many great names and so much talent on this album. We're going to talk to uh, Mitch about that. And, uh, you know, kind of what he's going to be doing in 2020 uh, once this virus leaves us and we can get back to the real world I'm sure he's going to be on tour somewhere. He's always a great conversation. He's got so much to say. A great guitar player from Los Angeles, California. Coming up next, it's Mitch Perry on the Industry 45 Podcast Show. All right, Industry 45 Podcast Show. Uh, always a privilege to talk to rock and roll stars all over the world, especially, I think, when they're from Los Angeles. There's just something about the the glam, the glitz, the glitter. Uh, Mitch Perry on the phone. How you doing, my friend? Doing good, man. How are you? Uh, you know, as best as I can under these circumstances, uh, you're probably the same. And, uh, you know, we're in a tough spot, but we're going to keep grinding away. And I'm, I was just saying to you before we started recording, your album and, and what you've done is miraculous. And we're going to talk about that. And your single, Believe, which is just, you hit it out of the park, especially for what's going on in today's world. But uh, first of all, congratulations uh, on a great album. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of everybody and everything on it. It's a record I've wanted to make for a long time and uh, finally have it. See, if you stick around long enough, shit happens, eh? <laughs> exactly. So I wanted to set the scene a little bit because you have an interesting um, kind of childhood, if, if you will. Your dad was a, a race car driver right in the 60s and 70s. Did you ever think that that's the path you were going to take? Uh, were you interested oh, yeah. in it and... and and do you own any cars now that are kind of fancy and things that you like to do? Well, you know what? I actually, I never planned on playing guitar. I was going to be a race car driver from the time I could talk. And uh, when my dad quit racing, we left London, England, which is where we live, and moved to Florida. And there, uh, there were no race cars and it was just me and the guitar and, and, and school and well, we kind of put school off to the side and I played guitar a lot. By the time I was 16, I was playing in uh, local bands and, and making a living playing the clubs in Florida. And by the time I was 18, I was already flown out to LA making records. How important was that move? Because, you know, we always talk about the importance of being where the action is, right? In Los Angeles, in Nashville, in, in New York City. So, I mean, obviously that must have been paramount. I, 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 yeah, no, I can give you a great example of that. Uh, because when I came out here, it, it was on the recommendation of Pat Thrall from the Pat Travers Band. He had seen me play. He recommended me to Alfonso Johnson who flew me out here to do his record. And Alfonso was a bass player in Santana and Weather Report. Anyway, um, when that project folded up, I really hadn't done any kind of social networking or you know, gone out and, and made friends with the local bands because I was always working with the band I was with. Um, so I knew I didn't want to go back to Florida but I didn't know what I was going to do out here. So I went to the guitar center, which is where I bought all my equipment when I got out here 
And there was a little guy, a little salesman named Wayne, who seemed to always know everything that was going on. So I went and asked him, he said, well, hey, man, you got to join Quiet Riot. Their guitar player just left to join Ozzy Osbourne. I'm like, I had never heard of uh, Quiet Riot. He goes, they're bigger than Van, he goes, they're bigger than Van Halen around here. I go, okay, <laughs> let's call him up. And literally, we called Rudy Sarzo from the Guitar Center. Yeah. And Rudy, Rudy had just left and joined Angel, but Kevin was going to keep Quiet Riot going, but renamed it Dubrow. So I joined the band for that. And like you ask, how important is it being out here? That's the only reason that happened. Right. So, yes, that, that's yeah. a great point. You played with some great bands, like Michael Shanker. Um, and I, I actually talked to uh, Rob McCauley last week uh, in an interview. But you oh, played, awesome. Yeah, he's such a super guy and, and a great story. He's got a great band. That's a whole other story, man. Uh, Lita Ford, a share. The one that stands out to me um, is Faster Pussycat. And I think it's because I'm 51. I play in a glam metal band. And I know you, your, your buddy's there with uh, Junkman in, in Los Angeles. And he's a, he's a ball drummer, right? And, and so am I. I'm a ball drummer. <laughs> and uh, I, I, we play Faster Pussycat. And I'm like, I'm looking at this. And I'm looking at you. And I go, I don't know. I just, it, it, that was very glam, you know? And I thought, I don't know. So what was your time in Faster Pussycat well, like? I, I, I can tell you how this worked out. Uh, Rick Browdy, who produced their record, was a good friend of mine and he called me in to do a couple of things on the record and band, you know, that Jamie and I became friends. I ended up, I ended up moving into the apartment building that Tammy lived in and got in the apartment next door to us. Cause I, I liked the building so much, but, um, yeah, I, I, I did the solo on Babylon on that. Night, and so you, so you played at the cat house? Oh, oh man, I lived at that place all, <laughs> pretty much from uh, when it opened till when it shut. I uh, I listen to Ricky's podcast a lot. He's got a, a great podcast, The Cat House, there. So uh, another cool thing is playing in Aerosmith or on Aerosmith's Classics Live. Now, there's two Classics Live albums, correct? And they were they were yes. I think recorded the, at two the, different two different times. Yeah, I, I'm actually not even familiar with where which concert the blue one which is the one i'm on i think that's the first, the first one. one yeah okay yeah no it's the first one and i'm on like three songs on on keyboards i, I did you know so i am definitely on kings and queens i think it was oh uh mama ken i think i put some piano on and maybe we forever woman and uh i think those are- how, how did that come about did, did you know Stephen? Did oh, you know the manager? I, I, was, I was, yeah, I was managed by Lieber and Krebs, who managed Aerosmith. Um, when Heaven, the band that I was in, that was managed by Lieber and Krebs, came to their company, it was right at the time Aerosmith left. But they, Aerosmith still owed Krebs another record. So Paul O'Neill, our producer, was producing the uh, Heaven record, and he called me to the uh, overdubs and I did. Nice, nice. Uh, so yeah. your your current uh, album and your band, um, it's kind of rock, blues, funk. It's got it all, right? The Mitch Perry group. What were some of your influences and and your inspirations as a guitar player and as a songwriter? Well, you know, it, it's that you know that you know that you notice uh, all the different feels in there. I was all over the board. There was no. There's never just one thing I liked. I mean, I was learning how to play the classical pieces like Mood for a Day off of Yes Records when I was 14. So I had that, but I also loved Zeppelin, and I also loved Johnny Winters, and I also loved, you know, Robin Trower. So, you know, it was, it was just all over the board. And if you listen to the record, you you know, I... It's funny when we were putting some stuff up on on SoundCloud where it asks for the sounds like, I'm like, going, well, there's bits and pieces of everything you can hear. It's like, you know, waste of time. I go, wow, what would happen if the Eagles and Pink Floyd had a baby? But it doesn't sound like either band. And so you'll hear a lot of that in the record. And I mean, there's everything from Humble Pie to the Faces to Pink Floyd to the Eagles to Zeppelin. I mean, 
you know, it's the whole board of uh, classic rock. There's so much great music, you know. And maybe that's why it's called Music Box. I don't know, but uh, that was a great name for the that, album. That is exactly why we called it that. You know, it, it, even when you see the cover that we have, that that, that was uh, taken, the picture is in Bad Waters in Death Valley. That's the lowest uh, point of land in America. And if you look up, you can see Mount Whitney, and that's the highest peak. So you got the two extremes, and, and we had just taken a trip to, you know, take some pictures, my wife and I. And, and uh, when we posted them, she posted a couple. Uh, Glenn Wexler got on and said what a beautiful place he thought that was to do album covers. And at that point, you know, I was sitting there going, wouldn't it be cool if we could just get a big music box over there and do a picture? So I, I contacted Glenn after uh, we got home, and what you see is a result of that. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Great, great album cover. Uh, so your band, uh, this is really interesting. Um, I, I couldn't believe it. Three vocalists, two females, one male. You got you got Keith England, right, who's in Montrose. Um, yeah. Shelly, who played with Michael Bolton, and is it Cara or Kara? Um, Kara, Kara Turner. And and just I was watching, like I said, your EPK, and just blew my mind. Like three powerhouse vocals, and is that how you kind of saw it right from the beginning that you would have these different sounds and textures vo vocally, or did that just kind of come, well, you know, as you were starting to, to, to record it? Yeah, it was. It kind of just you know it solved itself i knew i didn't just want one singer i, I wanted to do something different especially because i knew i was going to call it the mitch perry group and and it seems silly to me to have one front person who's not mitch perry in the mitch perry group <laughs> i kind of like it yeah. i like it huh no that's funny actually go ahead <laughs> yeah no I, so i i just you know I, I'd been playing with Kara and I'd been playing with Keith and, and Shelly became available. So we, we just brought her into the studio and, and now it's like we have something really special. Uh, the band is incredible. We have Tal Bergman on drums. He's from Billy Idol and Joe Bonamassa. Um, Dan McNay from Great White. And he also played in Montrose. And then we have uh, Ed Roth who was also in Montrose. I was going to ask so you, you, there's, got, you got all these Montrose people in your band. <laughs> my, yeah, Montrose alumni galore, and I played with Edgar Winter. So if nice. you like this stuff, you've got to check this record. Absolutely. Um, how, how do you but, just, how do you describe this record? Like if somebody said, listen, um, I don't know you, Mitch Perry. Uh, what, how do you describe this album to somebody? It, it's I call it new classic rock. Yeah. You know, classic rock is a is a form of music. Unfortunately, no one makes it. Apparently, you know, so it's all stairway to heaven and and you know the songs we know that are so great. Um, I love that stuff, but I also want to hear a new song. So I tried to write and record in that vein. I mean, when we recorded the record, one of the things that was really important to me is that every track be played live um we didn't just like track the drums and then add bass and then add guitar and then add keys uh we played a basic track live and yeah we did overdubs but we did it to the live track of me on guitar and dan on bass and dave on keys and you know so on now, I, that, was, that was my next question. Was it recorded live off the floor? Because the video I'm watching shows that it is. But um, was it something yeah. like that, that to you just stood out like this is, I need to do this live? Because as a musician, the vibe, the feel, the, the energy that it's creating. Because I, I know that from playing in a band myself, right? It's always, there's a total different energy playing and looking at three and four people than by yourself. Oh. Abs, absolutely. And, and this is all meant to be played live. I mean, this is what the band that's on the record is basically my Sunday uh, jam band. I do a gig every Sunday when I'm not out in the road or even if, if even if we're doing weekend dates, I make sure that I get the earliest flight home on Sunday so I can do my Sunday night gig. And um, it's that band. And, you know, it's uh I totally spaced on what you asked. <laughs> no, I was just—I was asking about the live off the floor. Now you're answering the question about. Uh, oh right, right. So, so we're, 
We're used to playing. We're used to playing live. I mean, the band kills. It's a jam band. I mean, when we take cover songs, um, we're taking them and we'll play them for half an hour. And we we don't just solo over the same changes. We'll do breakdowns. We'll we'll write a part on the spot during a breakdown. I mean, we have a little formula on how. You know, I, I have the signal I'll give to the band. Break it down. We break it down to the key of the song. I just go into whatever, and everyone follows along. Well, it's because you, you know, got talented so guys, jam- right? Yeah, it's a it's a jam band, and every one of the songs, like if you listen to like Pack It Up and Go, and it's got that wild outro or uh, or Soul Stare, same thing. Those were written that way on purpose because I wanted to have the songs be vehicles to jam live. So when you come see the band, it'll be another thing altogether, but you'll still get the great songs that you get on the album. So speaking of great songs, Believe is the uh, first single off the album. Uh, Was it always going to be the first single or was it just because of the position we're in globally that that you... Go ahead. Good call. It's because of the position we're in... um, you know, we, we were going to go with something else, obviously, than a ballad. But I'm sitting here on that first day of lockdown, and I'm listening to the words of Believe, and I'm going, dude, this is for right now. We got to put a video out yesterday. Yeah, and you did. It was a great video. And here's some testimonials. This song is getting me through these tough days was one of them. Uh, listening to Believe gave me a tear in my eye, and it gave me hope. Uh, deeply heart-touching. Uh, some great testimonials about the song. If you had to give one, what would it be? Oh, man. I am more proud of this than anything I've done. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a labor of love, and, and it, it's been something I've waited a long time to do, and now it's finally here. And I'm really proud of what everyone did on it. Um, not not just my own contributions. I mean, you know, we, we captured some magic moments here, and and that's what I'm really proud of. Uh, oh, just a couple more questions. Your, your guitar, I'm not a guitar guy. I said this earlier, I'm a drummer, but uh, my understanding is you have a 1978 Les Paul guitar that uh, you've used yeah. now. How, how, are you, how are you aware of that? Because uh, I did my research, Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, do you know that I bought this particular guitar off the shelf brand new? Yes, and you had it in storage so, yeah. somewhere for a long time, too. Oh, wow, you do some serious research. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it was in the uh, locker at SIR for about 10 years, but believe in Craig's Krebs was nice enough to call me up and give it back when they when they got rid of the locker. Nice. Uh, and one other thing uh, about speaking about guitar, your solo in "I Still Miss You." Um, ah. Incredible. Oh, thank you. Yeah, um, you know, you asked which, which you know musicians uh, I like. One of my heroes is Gary Moore, and that was my. Uh, my tip of the hat to him. So I'm, I'm glad that, that that touched a nerve. Uh, Music Box is, is phenomenal. Believe uh, the first single, uh, very timely, great video. Now, what is your plan? And I know that's a hard question today because, Christ, we don't know what anybody's plan is. But if, if in a perfect situation and we can get through what we're in right now, are you looking to tour the album um, at some time? Yeah, it, it, okay. This would be a perfect world. Perfect world. Everybody go listen to Believe today. Go to iTunes, get the record. By the time they let us out of lockdown, we're ready to go into rehearsals for a couple of weeks just to uh, just to uh, sharpen the knife again, and then go out and play. That's really that would be a perfect world. Um, you know, it'll probably take a while. I mean, we're still waiting to see how we're going to finish the rest of the sweet dates that we have yet. Yeah, right. Means being constantly moved and, and you know we don't know where where the goals are going to be you know at, well at if, the end of this. If, if you tour this album and i i hope um at some point at some time you will come to canada because i'd love to see this band uh like i said a great album music box and you know i've been following some of your other things as well and be honored to meet you in person and hang out and you know have a have a cup of coffee or a 
whiskey, whatever you like. <laughs> uh, lo- well, looking looking forward to that. I can't wait till we can do that. And, and I love Canada, so I, I definitely want to get back up there and play with my own band. Awesome. Th- thanks, thanks so much, Mitch. Yeah, thanks for having me.